In this lesson, I want to look at ways to make the dynamic host configuration protocol services highly available. We can imagine we're configuring our IPv4 or IPv6 through DHCP. So it's really a critical service within our data center, our entire IT infrastructure. Now remember, when we give our IP addresses, it's for a defined lease of time, for example, eight days. So if a DHCP server is unavailable for an hour or two, it's unlikely to cause major problems unless it's a brand new machine on the network. Because remember, at 50% of the lease time, machines will try and renew that lease. So if it's an eight day lease, after four days, the machines will try and renew to keep that IP address. But we definitely don't want to lose our DHCP configuration. Imagine we had to stand up a new DHCP server. Well, that can be very problematic in terms of well, which IP addresses have we already given out. Now, if you ever did find yourself in that situation where you had to stand up a new DHCP server with the same scope you already had defined in the past, and obviously some of those IP addresses would already be used, you can right click on the protocol, so IPv4, for example, select properties, and under advanced, I can say do a conflict detection attempt. Now, what this will do is even if the IP address seems available within the pool, before it assigns it to a client, it will try and just make sure, hey, is this IP address currently being used? It'll send out a ping over the network to see, well, is someone using it? So you can configure that conflict detection attempt just to make sure. I wanna make my DHCP scopes and configurations highly available. Now, what I am gonna stress is most of the technologies I'm talking about relate to IPv4. Now, the reason for this is IPv4 addresses are typically the ones that are in short supply. You need to be very careful with your scopes. There's only so many IP addresses, so you need to make sure they're protected. IPv6, there are so many addresses available, I really can just configure additional, completely different scopes of addresses on different servers. The only thing that would need to be consistent are the things like DNS servers, domain name configuration. So even in that stateless mode, I just need to make sure I keep those other configurations the same between all my DHCP servers. So we really focus on IPv4 in terms of high availability. Now the traditional way of making any service highly available is clustering. I can absolutely say on this cluster, I wanna create a new role. So I'm gonna configure role. And we have a type of DHCP server here. Now it's not available in my environment because I don't have DHCP installed on each of the nodes in the cluster. But if I selected this, it would then store the DHCP database on a cluster disk. So it's available potentially to any of the nodes in the cluster. Then one node would offer that service. And if that node failed, another node in the cluster would mount the disk with the DHCP database. Remember that DHCP database is just stored by default in the C Windows System32 DHCP folder. But in a cluster configuration, it would store it on that cluster disk instead. And now this would be completely protected and highly available. The problem is many environments maybe don't have a cluster or don't want to dedicate cluster resources to something like DHCP. Therefore, the traditional approach to solving this was something called split scope. And the way this works is I have a number of IP addresses within my DHCP configuration, maybe 100 addresses. In a split scope, I would maybe assign 80% or 80 addresses to my primary DHCP server and 20% or 20 to a different DHCP server, a non-primary. What this would enable me to do is, the primary server would give out those IP addresses under normal circumstances, but in the event it was unavailable, that other DHCP server has a small subset of different addresses, so they're not overlapping, it's actually a different set from within that overall 100 addresses that it could give out in an emergency. On that secondary server, on the scope advanced configuration, I can actually add a delay to maybe wait 100 milliseconds or maybe 1000 milliseconds to make sure the primary is the one that would normally give out the IP address. And in 2008 R2, configuring that split scope was made a lot easier. I have a DHCP server here. I have a scope and I can right click. And this was actually part of 2008 R2, but it's still here in 2012. And I can say split scope. So it added a wizard to make this easier for you. So I say next introduction, I add what is my second DHCP server who I want to have a small portion of the address space. 
And then it's got a little slider that allows me to say, well, what percentage of addresses should that second server get? And what it will actually do is it will then remove them from this primary server, this 20%, and configure a separate scope on that second server. So I can move this slider around to say how I want the addresses split up. Because of what I'm actually doing, it's going to say it's going to delete active leases. Do I want a delay on that second DHCP server? So remember, I showed you that configuration already. It's going to do it for me. And then I would hit finish. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to do split scope because it's still a problem. Effectively, I have two separate scopes, one on each server. And while, yes, they can both give out IP addresses, if I lose my primary DHCP server, which had 80% of the addresses, well, they're not available on that second server. It has no idea what addresses I've given out. So in 2012, there's a better option. I can now configure failover. So I only have one scope, so it's forcing me to select that one, or I could unselect select all and then select individual ones. I'm now going to create a partner server. So this is only ever between two servers. It's a partner relationship. So I'm going to add my second DHCP server. If there was an existing relationship, I could reuse it. Now I actually deleted this earlier. I already had this configured. Gives it a name, which is really just the two servers. I'm going to use a load balance mode by default, which means they are both giving out IP addresses, but they're going to replicate the leases they've given out. So it won't overlap. There's also a hot standby mode where only one of them gives out IP addresses, but it replicates those over to the second one. So if the primary was unavailable, the second one knows which addresses are used and can carry on. It's showing me the split 50 50. I'm going to hit finish. Now it's configured that and I'm good to go. Now this is because I had a relationship already. It will also typically ask you for a secret. So this is a, for example, password that's used to encrypt some of this information. So if I go to my properties and do failover, I can see stateless server is normal, partner server is normal, it's configured. If I look at IPv4 and look at my properties and my failover, I can see the relationship there. It shows me the mode. I can click edit. And notice it's got that message authentication, the shared secret. It didn't prompt me for that because I've already had a relationship in the past. It's shown me I'm using that load balance mode, 50-50, I could change those percentages. I can move it to a hot standby mode. I can now connect to my second server. And if I now do a refresh, I'll see that scope has now appeared. Also, I'll see that relationship is created and it's using that same configuration. So now any lease that actually occurs on either server will replicate over to the other. So they're actually kept in sync. And if one failed, it would detect and it would give out all the IP addresses without any risk of duplication of IP. So this is really the best scenario. They can both be given out IP addresses. I have that relationship and they're synchronizing. Now, only two servers can be part of a relationship, but I can absolutely have relationships with other servers. I might have 10 DHCP servers. I might have one master and that master server has a relationship with each of the other DHCP servers. So for any one scope, it's only replicated between two servers. But if I had 10 different scopes, I could have one server replicating with nine, 10 different servers. Each of those has one of those scopes defined and it's replicating individually. So in any one relationship, only ever two servers, but one server can be part of multiple relationships. And I can manage those all from within the properties of the IPv4 protocol. Now you will notice I don't see this for IPv6. This is because it's really not required as I talked about earlier. For IPv6, I can just define lots of different scopes. There's no problem with running out of addresses. And I would just make sure I have consistent options defined on each of my servers. So I have a number of options. I can use clustering. I could split scope. Or I can now configure the failover capability, the replication that was introduced in Windows Server 2012. So this completes the lesson on making DHCP highly available.